Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Intel Arc Pro B50. So this is the reference model from Intel. It comes in this non-discreet box. So let's go ahead and open it here. Inside you get a package pamphlet with a quick start guide and then the GPU itself. This is a 16 gigabyte GPU with professional ISV certified drivers from Intel. So the nice thing about this GPU, let's go ahead and take it out here. All right, so here it is. Inside the box, you get the GPU itself. And it also includes the adapter. This is a two-finger GPU. And I don't like that they didn't have the longer adapter installed. So you have to install this uh, IO plate manually which will require removing the back plate so that's what two four six eight screws these are torque screws so in order for you to install this in a standard desktop you will need a t6 torx if the camera will focus there t6 torx screwdriver in order to actually remove the screws there are two on the io plate there with the two fingers and then there are what looks like eight. One is covered by this sticker here. So I don't like that it's like that. I mean, I wish it would have come pre-installed with a longer one. I think most people that are interested in this are gonna put it in a desktop computer. Um, this is more for like an enterprise deployment with a carrier tray, um, but it looks like that's how it comes. And you wanna be very careful when you remove the back plate because you don't wanna break any of the, the SMD connections. So let's go ahead and install this adapter. So what I'm gonna do, we have to remove all of these screws, unfortunately, even though I literally just got this GPU. So it's like some user assembly required, unless you're going to use it in some kind of, I don't know, like low profile eGPU, enclosure or something but even most of the gpu enclosures for eGPU require a standard bracket there so we're going to go ahead and remove all those screws okay once those screws are out just carefully wiggle it a little bit to get it to come off there are thermal pads underneath so there are memory chips on the back so you want to be careful not to damage the thermal pads for the vram chips there it looks like this one has samsung so it does use this back plate to sink some of the heat for these four memory modules and then we want to also take off the two screws here these are again t6 torx screws but just be very careful in removing that because there are a lot of delicate there are a lot of delicate components on this board that are close to the I.O. And you don't want those to get damaged. So be very careful when removing that. Now we're going to install the larger one. So I want to make sure I have this installed properly. Okay, so once we have the adapter installed, so this is interesting because this is GPU is almost like it should say some user assembly required. If you plan on installing this into a standard desktop, it would have been much better if they would have included the standard bracket there instead of the smaller one. However, at least Intel includes the adapter for the full length IO bracket shield here. So at least we're able to do that. But it does require removing the security sticker. So if you're not familiar with doing that, you don't want to mess that up. It is kind of an involved process or somewhat involved. Uh, but anyway, that is it. You can see it is a blower style. It is a two-slot design, two-finger design. So it is uh, a great small car with 16 gigabytes of VRAM without any PCI power connector, which is its main selling point because there is an AMD card that is similarly priced. It's a little bit more. It's the Radeon Pro W7500, which I do have. The nice thing about the AMD card is it is a single-slot card, but it is taller than this. So it would obstruct the GPU above it if you have an axial style cooler in the primary GPU. 
But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and install this into the desktop now and test it out. Okay, to install this GPU, I am going to be installing this GPU as my second graphics card. So I have the integrated Radeon graphics from the Ryzen 9950X 3D. We have a Astral 5090 here as the primary GPU. So that gives me AMD graphics for integrated. It gives me NVIDIA graphics via the RTX 50 series. And then now we're going to be installing Intel's first Gen 5 graphics card. So this motherboard supports two Gen 5 graphics cards. We have the 5090, that's a Gen 5. And then this Intel B850 is different from the earlier Intel cards. And then this one actually supports Gen 5 speeds. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. This is an X8 GPU. It does not use 16 lanes. It is eight lanes of Gen 5, which is perfect for this motherboard because the MSI X870E Godlike can do dual X8 Gen 5 as long as you use the second PCIe slot for the GPU. All right, so it's in and we wanna secure it with the screws there. And you can see the nice thing about this GPU is because it is relatively low profile, it doesn't fully obstruct the fans on this large GPU with these axial style fans. All right, you can see it connected in there with plenty of space for the GPU above it to fit. So we've got the B50 down there. Make sure that nothing is obstructing the fan so it can get all the air it needs. And it looks pretty good. So there we go. The Godlike now has dual GPU. The only thing is I can't use my X4 slot anymore because this is not a single slot card. So uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, and the last thing that we'll do once you have uh, the GPU installed and you have the latest drivers installed, you can verify that everything is in here. We can look at the Intel Arc Pro B50 graphics in Task Manager. The driver date will be there. The dedicated GPU memory will be listed. So 16 gigabytes and a total of 48 gigabytes shared GPU memory. Just as a test, I am using the Intel Arc B Pro 50 graphics to encode this recording here on my desktop. And you can see that is the recording being processed right now by the encoder media engine here using AV1. And then lastly, the other way to verify, I'm using Tech Power Up's excellent program called GPU-Z. This is a great freeware to download to show you the capabilities of the GPU. So we can see we have the Arc Pro B50 in here. It tells you the GPU code name, the processor technology, fabrication technology. So it's five nanometer. It was released this year. The die size, the BIOS version, and also most importantly, the bus interface. So it tells us that the GPU is capable of PCIe eight lanes Gen 5, which is a first for Intel Arc GPUs. And we are running at the full eight lanes Gen 5 because this motherboard, the X870E Godlike, the second slot supports eight lanes of up to Gen 5. So we are getting the full bandwidth that this card offers. Resizable bar is enabled. This is an official Windows certified driver from August 19th. And then these are the bus width and the bandwidth numbers, the memory type, etc. So pretty much that's it. Uh, we can look at sensors to see some of the info on the GPU. You can see it is running at 1600 RPM on that blower style fan. And these are the temperatures while it is encoding video. So it's not, it's not idling, it actually has a workload. The chip power draw is not very high and the board power draws not very high either. And that's the reason why this GPU is perfect for a media encoding accelerator or an LLM inferencing on a small scale because it offers 16 gigabytes of memory while also not requiring a PCIe power connector. So that makes this a great choice for running, you know, multi GPU or if you just wanted like a media encoder engine with a lot of memory, this is a pretty good choice. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on these entry-level professional graphics cards because I think they are a pretty interesting market to explore in terms of what the GPU is offering at the price point. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.